So, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to today to talk about containers in the embedded world and more specifically about how to use them with Yocto. So, um, since one year, two years maybe, we've started seeing people asking us to do container stuff in embedded products. Uh, and so we've reached the point where we have enough people wanting to know about it that it's worth discussing it a little. So first I'll, I'm going to quickly talk about containers in general and why they are useful for us in the embedded world. We don't exactly have the same use case as the data center who has been driving containers. Then we'll look how to build images with Yocto, well, images for containers with Yocto, and then how to use those images within a general Yocto image that is for the target. So, what is a container? A container is a Linux process or a bunch of processes that run in an environment which is different from the host environment. So, typically we have two use cases. Either we use it to run a complete Linux distribution within another Linux distribution, or we just want to run a single process in a very limited shoot. I mean, limited in more limited than what a shoot normally is. So we don't have exactly the same use case as the data center, so I'll detail what most people think is the reasons we use containers and how it applies to uh, embedded systems. So basically, Rapid deployment of light instances, that's all about provisioning and that sort of stuff. Control of the software execution, that's more about having the right libraries for the right binary, being independent of the hardware, and last, security. So rapid deployment of light instances, we don't really have that. I mean, in the embedded world, we very rarely add functionalities to a product while it's running. That's pretty uncommon. We do software upgrades, which add stuff, but we don't do light provisioning or that sort of stuff. Control of the software execution and environment, a little. I mean, it has happened that we had to uh, put a very old binary uh, into a recent product and it wouldn't work with a modern kernel or with a modern version of the Libc, so we had to use containers to kind of hide the real world to that particular application. So there are use cases, but they are pretty rare. Being an independent of the hardware, again, a little with legacy applications, but usually in the embedded world, we don't want to be independent of the hardware because the very reason we have an embedded product is to use our very particular hardware. So, although that's not really a very good reason to use containers, but there is one good reason, and that's security. Containers uh, allow to very easily split functionality between processes, have each process have a very limited set of functionality it can use, and we can very easily control communication within, between processes. So there are very good reasons to use containers in the embedded world, that's why we've been asked to do it, but it's a bit different from the data center and everything about provisioning, about uh, freezing and restoring processes is stuff we don't really have in the embedded world. The, uh, the big difference is our containers tend to be hard-coded. I mean, we had a presentation about software updates. We do whole partition upgrade in general. So we, uh, we would upgrade your, the container with the host as a whole. So we don't really add or remove containers. So that being said, we have two types of containers which match more or less the two use cases I've mentioned in my first slide. You have full containers, so that's really a complete Linux in a subdirectory of your main file system. So you have all sorts of images on the internet you can download, starting by normal distribution uh, boot disks. And, uh, but the problem with those is that they're usually huge. I mean, it is a complete desktop uh, Linux you would put in there. So in the embedded world, we very rarely put a complete distribution with an embedded product. I don't say it never happened, but I would say it usually happened for ba very bad reasons. Then you have light containers. So light containers, basically the idea you, is you would have uh, one useful binary into your uh, shoot, and you add all the libraries that binary need, you add all the configuration files, data files it needs, and nothing else. 
So it's very isolated. You have a really minimal set of stuff into your image. It can be very small because you can just put nothing in there, but it can be very hard to debug and administer because you have nothing in there. I have had to, sometimes for some customers with hard security requirements, we had to do images which without a shell. So it's a bit hard to see what's going on. So this is a common security uh, requirement. We've mentioned uh, ANSI a bit earlier today. They have that requirement for some of their pro processes. So we have to know how those stuff work. So um, at that point, we, when we started looking at containers, we started looking how container images are generated, how the data center world will um, create those images and use them. And Honestly, it's very badly documented. Most uh, containers tutorial will tell you just download an image on the internet. So I've tried to dig. This is not really my area of, of expertise. I may, might have missed an important way to build images, but those are the ones I've found, so bear with me. Uh, most uh, image building tools are based on one of the two most common uh, distribution infrastructure, Debian and a Red Hat. So either DNF or Dev Bootstrap will download whatever packages are needed to make a bootable image and will build a custom Debian Red Hat image for you. Uh, it's pretty fast, it works pretty well, but it will only do full container images. It's based on pre-compiled packages, so if you want to compile for your target with your own requirements, it won't work. And it's pretty huge. I mean. At the embedded scale, it's pretty huge. So it's not really a good match for, um, for what we want to do. Then I tried to look how you customize an image. Uh, how do you, if you have a generic image, that's usually not what you want and you want to add your own configuration files and stuff like that for your own web server or whatever. The most common way to do that in the, in the container world is to loop back on the image you have go and tweak your configuration file, unmount the image, and then you clone the image in all the machines you want to have. Uh, the problem with that, first, we're still with large images from a normal distro. Uh, there is no traceability and no reproducibility. There is no real tool I could find to um, automate, document, and do configuration management on the content of container images. I must, might have missed some. I would ha be very happy if someone here knew a good tool to do that, but I have missed some. But what I've seen is no traceability, no reproducibility. Some people do it with Ansible or stuff like that, but I'm not very clear how it works. So I was really surprised to find out that is a recommended way to customize an image. Then I would like to mention Docker and Docker's layer system. Docker's layer system is pretty interesting, but it does not really solve our problem either. Basically, a uh, Docker layer is an overlay of pre-built binaries and configuration files that will just um, go on top of an existing image. So it will add binaries, it will add libraries. It might depend on other container, uh, on other Docker layers, which would add other binaries for a library and stuff like that. It will have its own configuration files. Uh, it's pretty in, uh, interesting. It adds some sort of traceability because you know what layer you have added and you can add your own layer on top of uh, generic layers. But it's still, it still says nothing about how to compile stuff and how to have your own binaries. So it's still not really for us. So at that point, when we were studying containers, or the big conclusion we had is that there was no real tool uh, that would match our own requirements. So no source archiving. I mean, any, if anybody here had to debug an embedded system that was more than 10 years old, you know how it, important it is to save all your sources, patches, compilers, uh, even the distro you're working on, and sometimes even the hardware on which you compile the distro. Yes, I had such problems. You can't optimize for specific hard hardware because it's already compiled. Uh, as I said, there's lots of manual steps and no safe way to record them. So it's, yeah, you open file, blah, and you edit, and you add a user and stuff like that. That's not really good. 
Nowadays, in the embedded world, we have great tools for license traceability to know what software we've put in there and what license it is and have those uh, great manifests with all the licenses. There is no such tool that I could find. And yeah, so it boils down, we are used to have a complete automated build process from, uh, some scra from scratch. This does not exist as far as I can tell. And for light containers, it's even worse. There's basically nothing. I mean, the only documentation I could find for doing light containers was, well, you download Apache, you compile Apache, you loop back mount an image, and then you make install into the loop back mounted image. So again, yeah, that's the right way to do it, but it's also completely impossible to trace and to document. So fortunately, um, in the embedded world, we're not good at security. We have serious problems with long, ti long time maintenance, but if there's one thing we're really good at, it's building images. We've did it a lot, we do it a lot, and we have great tools to do it, so let's use our tools. So how to build a container image with Yocto? So we, as I said, there are two types of images, full containers and light containers. For a full container, we want uh, an image which is more or less able to boot by itself. I mean, it has to have its own init system. It has to probably have all the normal tools you expect from a distribution. The only thing you don't want is a kernel and a, a, and a bootloader because that will be done by the host. So how you do that? So what I have here is a complete recipe for core image minimal, which is the most standard image in uh, Yocto, but with the kernel and a bootloader removed. So it's basically nothing more than uh, you use a normal core image minimal image and you just change a variable so it doesn't uh, pull in all that, that stuff you don't need. And that's it. It's a full container image, it's a normal image, it's, it, it's very simple to do. And that's how we've done it and it works pretty well. Well, we didn't do it a lot because we rarely need full container images in embedded systems. But when we do, it's really trivial to do. So that's it for full image. What about light container images? Slightly more complicated. So again, complete uh, Yocto recipe, uh, pretty simple. Uh, you inherit image, which means basically this is not a normal package. This is an image which will do uh, a complete, uh, which, which will do um, a root file system. Image linguist to say, well, you don't want any translations. So you might want translations, but usually you don't. So you say you force the variable image linguist so they are all removed. Um, all packages tend to pull in all sorts of optional dependencies. We want no optional re dependencies. So we do no recommendation equal one and that removes all optional dependencies. Image fe features are, um, how would I put it? High level flags that gives uh, f features to an image. For example, no root password or, or has an uh, a SSH server or that sort of stuff. It, it influences the build process of the um, image in various ways. Usually when you want a light container, you want none of those. You might want some of those for special use case, in, in which case it works perfectly, but usually you want none of those. So just remove them. Again, rootfs bootstrap installed to remove all the things that bootstraps the root file system. So the kernel, the bootloaders, we don't want that. You want a, a license and a license file checksum. If you don't put them, Yocto will just not uh, compile your, uh, your uh, package. And then you say what you want into your image. And in, in the case I put here, you just want your HTTP server. So I put light TTPD uh, in there. And that's it. Uh, we want LITTPD. Uh, we want all its mandatory uh, dependencies. It's hard to figure out what they are, but Yocto just does it for us. So it's just easy. We let Yocto do all the heavy lifting, and this will do a lightweight container image. So once you do that, this is what you have as the packages installed into your image. When you look at them, you have LITTPD plus all its mo mo modules. You have a couple of libraries that are needed by light TTPD. And uh, for, uh, you have update alternatives and bash that are needed. So you need bash because uh, all, the, all of those need a shell. 
and I was not uh, able to figure out what uh, added this dependency of the shell. It seems to be hard-coded somewhere in Yocto, but I was not able to figure out where. Was that some work for me in the future to remove that dependency? Yes? It's not in big, big dash E. I think it's in the um, do package data where, where it's hard coded, but I was not able to dive deep enough to find the exact line. So except for this bash thing, it's pretty go good, it's pretty small. So it's slightly harder than what I've just told, so I'll give you a few pointers on, the, on where you might have problems when you're doing that yourself. So, First of all, uh, uncompressed root file system. I mean, we're, in my examples after that, I will use X4 file systems, but if you use an uncompressed file system, you will have some problems because uh, the um, Yocto has a mechanism. It looks for files and figure out what package provides what files. And since our image will pro provide files but at the wrong place, it might confuse Yocto. Uh, the, the second surprise, we've mentioned Bash, but Yocto is really good at tracking dependencies, and sometimes it's surprising. The first time I had to install a container that was supposed to just launch a Python script, it had env added and bash added. Why? Because standard Python library will start with user bin env bash, or sh, and Yocto uh, looked at it, found out that it was needed, and added it as a dependency. And last, uh, in my previous slides, I shown that it was pretty easy to remove the kernel in a single line. That's a bit more complicated because it can, can be uh, BSP dependent. So you might have to find out how to do it for your own image in your own way. But overall, it's pretty simple. It works pretty well. There is a little bit of work to adapt, uh, especially with light containers. You need to be a bit careful, but overall, pretty simple. Now, that was just to make images, which is pretty cool, but we can push that a bit further. And now we're going to use those images to put them into Yocto images. So this is the good old Yocto uh, image that everybody knows that explains how uh, Yocto works. So you take uh, recipes on the left and other configuration files you provide. You go on the internet to download the source of all your packages. There is a big blue machine that transforms all that into packages. That's step one, we build packages. Once we have our packages, there is step two that takes those packages, again goes into the big blue machine and transforms them into images by assembling packages. So how do we put a container into an image? A container is an image. So first step, we take an image and we use it as a, well, remote source. It's not really a remote, but it still works. Once we have that, we pack this, this file, which is an X4 file, into a package. And we put the package into the package feed just like any other package. And once that's done, we do a second image, which simply includes that new package. And that said, we have built an image that contains a container and has all the infrastructure of package management. So it's pretty cool. So how does it work? It's pretty simple. Well, it took us quite some time to figure it out because there is one or two magical line in there, but overall still pretty simple. So what do we have? We have a package arch line. Uh, Yocto is pretty good usually to figure out if a given package is uh, arch dependent or machine dependent or stuff like that. But with container images, especially when they're X4, it gets confused. So you have to tell it explicitly. Uh, you tell him where to find the images. So that will be in your deployment directory. So that's the second line. Then the important line, do fetch depth task equal do image complete. So that's the magic line that tells Yocto you need to wait for other images to be built before you build this package. Uh, that's the one we took uh, quite some time to figure out. <laughs> then you have doom compile no exec equal one because we don't compile anything. We do the, all, all these, the Yocto steps, but we don't need the compilation st um, uh, uh, steps. Then you, do, you just add a depends on whatever image you use, so I've put core image minimal, I should have put core image minimal package or a, a container variant, but it works too. 
and everything else is just a standard recipe. So where are the images? I've removed the MD5 sum check because it's, it's, the image would have a different MD5 sum each time it's built. And do is install is very, very simply put it on the target. And then you need to add whatever uh, you have to do for your own uh, packet, uh, container manager. In this case, I've used system days, system day and spawn. So you need a second file next to the X4 and you need to runtime depend on system D container so it's installed. If you want to use LXC, you put an LXC file on the top and you depend on LXC and this will work. And that's it. It works. I mean, the whole thing with this idea is basically to tell you that it works and really it's pretty simple and it's pretty robust. So you have all the traceability and reproducibility of Yocto. Huh? It's just the whole mechanic works. Packaging an image is rather simple. Uh, you do save some work because, uh, because of the two steps, the packages are shared between the host and the image. So if you have the same thing installed in the host and the image, it will be compiled once. But it also means that you have to have the same compiler option for the host and the image. The container image is a normal package. So if you use package management, you can upgrade the container image as a package. You can put it in your package feed and it will be downloaded like any other package and upgraded like any other package. The container image is an image. So it contains package. And if you activate package management within the container image, you can uh, upgrade the packages within the container image. Don't do both. And then, of course, all the Yocto tooling is available. So you can have your build stats, you can have your build history, you can have details on the packages install inside the container image to see what takes most space outside to see what takes most space, and, that, and everything. So the last line, I'll comment on it a bit later. But overall, we've been doing that for a couple of customers now, and it's always been very simple and working really well. Well, we still have all the problems that come with manipulating containers and figuring out what you need and what you don't need in a container, but that's a container problem. The embedded part is fixed. You have your traceability, you can save your source code, and you will have it in 10 years and it will be just the right source code. And yeah, it's the last line. It's basically the idea that I wanted to upstream whatever I would do here. And overall, when you look at it, I would have had three lines to upstream. So it took us a lot of time to find out those three lines. So here they are, you can use them as much as you want, but there is no real way to make it into a BB class or something like that, because basically it's uh, too simple for that once you figure it out. That's it. Um, it's just a good tricks I wanted to pass along for people interested. And yeah, it works. Any questions? Okay, the mic. I, I, I have been told not to answer any question as if you don't have a mic. Yeah, okay, can you go with like two slides back? Yeah, this one. So, um, I do not think you need the depends and I think you can just do like do install depends on the core image minimal and then in do install you can just access uh, deploy the year I believe and just pull out the image from there um, and this will improve your parallelization of the build process because the do install will actually be depending on the image generation task completion and then the file will be available so in the install you can pull it from the deploy directory okay, and so then package it and that will be it. So just so I understand correctly, what, what I'm doing right now is I'm doing that, uh, is I'm making sure that the, my uh, container recipe depends on the image recipe. And what you're telling me to do is have the do install of my con container depends on the do, do image complete yeah. of the image. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes, that's right, that would be better. <laughs> and also then you wouldn't even need all that SRC URI hacking there because you would just pull that image from the deploy directory. Um, true, yes. Uh, and the SRC URI actually is hacking. Uh, that's really just that. That's open to discussion.
Well, one other thing you have to remember is that I have two files here, and the second one will, would usually be uh, a file provided by the recipe. Oh yeah, the, the endspawn stuff, that yeah. should be in the SRC URI, but the X4 image should not be there. Okay, yes. Um, I mean, unless you want to deliver that X4 image in your source tree, which you probably do not want to do. Yeah, true. As a, sign, a side note when, while I'm on uh, this slide, one of the things you can't generalize because it's very dependent is the name of the X4 file. Yeah. Because some it's it's uh, BSP dependent. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, just point. No, that's not related to your question. It's just because we're on this slide. Yeah, that, that's all I, I have to say. Uh, yeah, this one we worked with where I how I tested it, but it might not work with the next BSP. Just saying while while we are around. Other questions? That's it. Well, thank you.